What's up, Narco Game? We back two in one night, man. Look, I'm trying to tell y'all, America is sneaking their way into this war. And for everybody that's a naysayer, y'all gonna have to drop some receipts in the comments or something, man. Let me know what y'all see that I am missing because I am seeing something that's escalating further than we than what we expected it to. So, man, before we get to this video, y'all hit that like button, y'all hit that subscribe button. Y'all see we on this topic from every angle. Y'all go check out my last video I just dropped. Man, we're gonna get into this video. This video is explaining how America is getting involved into this war and how and how we are already at war with Putin and Russia, I, I would say. So yeah, man, y'all get y'all get y'all popcorn ready. Get y'all beers or cokes and drinks or whatever ready. Because this is gonna be a a, a a roller coaster. Let's get into this video, Narco Gang. Hit that like button. Most Americans deeply sympathize with the people of Ukraine. They got invaded. Who wouldn't sympathize with them? So our Congress and our executive branch have been busy shoveling armaments to the government of Ukraine. And again, no one's questioning anyone's motives here. But if you're going to accelerate a conflict in Eastern Europe, you have to wonder what the consequences might be. What would it mean if the United States was sucked into a war with Russia? Well, that's one of the questions we asked the other day to Congresswoman Maria Salazar of Florida. She's the one who refused to rule out imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine. In fact, called for it. Watch. My position is that we should not take not the no-fly zone off the table. But before that, that's two. We need to do one. And one is to give Zelensky exactly what he's asking for. No right. troops on the ground. Let's give him the mix and the S-300, what he needs to defend his own air uh, airspace. So he right. will create his no his own no-fly zone. So if you're starting... With that being said, y'all already know that we are finding a way. And when I say we as us Americans, we are finding a way to get our way into this war pretty much as y'all can see this is not going to end no time soon this is only escalating and from the looks of it it's starting to get more dangerous from the weapons that they're using this is new technology this is new this is the first first time ever used they they, they just russia just used a hypersonic missile in Russia, go check out my last video. I mean, in Ukraine, go check out my last video, and y'all gonna see how dangerous it's starting to get. We talk about nuclear threats for real. Starting to get the impression that the people formulating our foreign policy have no freaking clue what they're talking about and haven't thought past, say, tonight in the implications of what they're recommending. You may be onto something. There are a lot of deeply ignorant, reckless people, even some of them motivated by perfectly noble impulses, who are running things. So may, now may be the time to pause and ask, what would it mean to enter into a hot war with Russia? Brian Dean Wright is a former CIA operations officer. He's thought a lot about that. He joins us tonight. Brian, thanks so much for coming on. So I, this is one of those questions. I mean, look, I, I think the public has a right to determine what it thinks of this and make that decision on the basis of all available facts. So I'd just be interested in asking what you think, how close are we to a, a, an open war with Russia and what would that mean for the United States? Great questions, it gets worse every day. The possibility of a hot war are real and getting more real every day. Look, what I'm asking Americans to do tonight is put aside their hatred for Putin or Zelensky for that matter or Ukraine or Russia. Put all that aside for a moment. Understand that we have in effect declared war against Russia. We have done You heard that? I'm gonna back that up for y'all for those in the back that didn't hit really hear that correctly. Let's back that up. Understand that we have in effect declared war against Russia. Diago for anybody that 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 that's a naysayer that said that we are not at war or not a conflict a war the words w-a-r has been used we are in official war with russia so all that we not did i don't want to hear none of that 
we have done three things. One, we have crippled their economy. One tactic of war. Right. Two, we are shoving in all these weapons. And third, another tactic of war. This hasn't gotten a lot of press. We are giving tactical intelligence to the Ukrainian government to put an X on the forehead of a Russian soldier and Russian equipment. Let me say that a little differently. Our spies and our satellites are helping the Ukrainians kill Russians. There you go. Y'all heard it plain and simple, man. I'm trying to tell y'all this war is getting more hectic and more drastic. And it's it's more political because when when Putin says I'm going to pretty much invade Ukraine and if any country involve itself, it's pretty much going to meet hell. When he says involve itself, he means in any way, not just boots on on the ground. He's talking about with the sanctions that America has been putting on them. He's talking about the weapons that Sweden has been giving to them. Poland has been giving them weapons. Poland, ha Poland has also been accepting refugees from Ukraine as well. All of this is what Putin is considered interfering with what's going on between Ukraine and Russia. So... This is definitely looking like it's going to be an all-out conflict, I will say, because y'all don't like the word war, but conflict. But let's get back to it. So we have declared war. So we should be asking, shouldn't we, well, what's that war going to look like, to your point? And indeed, we should start with the first place of, well, who's actually putting together our war response? Well, we know that the folks at the Pentagon are the ones who are primarily responsible for that. But, but actually, wait a second. They just got us out of a 20-year war, didn't they? Or actually, they kept us in one, and we lost it yeah. to goat herders, okay? Now we have folks on Capitol Hill and in the White House who were also around for 20 years, and they were the ones who were formulating the policies that also lost that war. So the people who are now formulating our response to a nuclear-armed Russia are the same ones who couldn't figure out how to beat goat herders in Afghanistan. That should cause everyone a very real degree of concern, and we should be asking each other about it, and we should be talking about it. So then the second question becomes, if in fact this gets hot, what happens? We know that it will escalate, and so that means that some of the first steps will be what are called asymmetric, right? Russia can't sanction our economy in the way that we did his, so he's going to do things like a cyber attack. I want people to ask themselves tonight, what if in their... That cyber attack is, is for real, man. They talking about hacking into bank accounts, hacking into Facebook accounts, all types of, man. Their hometown, Russia were to shut off the lights or the water. Do you think there might be riots? Probably. You brought forward this very horrific idea and, and notion tonight in Brooklyn and other places of bread lines. Think that could get violent? Of course it could. So how would people's mayors and governors respond to riots? We saw it a couple years ago. Does that give you pause, seeing the BLM riots? That, that should also give you quite. So we have a whole variety of issues about then, then the sacrifice that will go on. That's a whole different segment, but it involves young people dying. And we should also be talking about that because our people in Washington aren't going to be the ones sacrificing. But they are the ones who feel virtuous by doing all of this stuff and damn the consequences. I see a, I see a pattern, a recurring theme here, um, and I'm just grateful for the clarity you provided. Brian Dean Wright, I hope you'll come back. Man, look, I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, that's the end of this video. But for y'all that's telling me that this is not going to be a war war, blah, 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 then y'all need to let me know what's the facts that y'all see. Not, the, not what y'all think. I need to see factual evidence because even though you can't just go off the news, mind you, this is the news, right? But y'all look at my last clip. Y'all see that there was a hypersonic missile for the first time ever that has been used in Ukraine by Russia. So y'all can see the 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 it's, it's it's the upscale of the conflict. And as y'all can see, Putin is not liking these sanctions that we we are putting on them, and he's also not liking that Sweden and Poland is interfering with Ukraine. So. All we can do is look at the look at what's what's being presented to us and be able to connect the dots and this is not gonna stop no time soon.
So with that being said, Narco Gang, y'all hit that like button, y'all hit that subscribe button, y'all drop a comment down below, let me know how y'all feel about what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. Y'all go ahead and share this video, man, Narco Gang, we out.